moving on, as we uh, mentioned at the top of the show, uh, great news for not just uh, collectors and, and fans of physical media, but I think that um, for Star Wars fans in general, we've got a couple of uh, physical media releases to follow up the already released seasons one and two of The Mandalorian, which I'm holding right here in my hands. These are the uh, 4K steel books. This looks to be exactly, uh, in terms of format, the same as as the, the other two releases. We've got the Kenobi series, which this was, other than, outside of Mando, this is the one I really, really wanted a physical release. And I think it's because it's so tied into the canon of the films and just not having that on a on on the shelf with the films was really bugging me. Um, so here you can see if you're watching the full uh, show video, it features uh, both discs uh, as well as some of those those cards of the concept art, which are uh, I've got them here from the the Mando set. They're like uh, I don't know what are they they like five by six something like that. These cards and. Um, you know, it just adds a little bit extra collectability to them. As far as the cover art, I, I, I'm digging this one for Kenobi. I like it. I like all the pictures that they've um, added. You got Vader and and, and uh, Obi Wan on the on the cover. You got little Leia there as well. Uh, Obi Wan on the Eopi. Obi on the Eopi. And then <laughs> uh, the center spread is, of course, that it, incredible battle at the end. And I think it is an incredible battle. That, that first one that they have, the first duel with the fire and the rocks, eh, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I look at yeah. that and I go, freaking COVID. <laughs> I do. I look at that because I think that has a lot what, to do with it. But the lead up to that duel is oh. absolutely intense vader's walking through the village he, he's snapping necks of teenagers he's he's dragging people in the dirt it's it, that's yeah. the type of stuff that just makes my the hair on my arm stand up and it led us to that showdown between vader and kenobi and in in what they were in a quarry or something i mean yeah. like i can i could take a five minute drive <laughs> out of my neighborhood and go to the exact same shooting location all of a sudden like. you're was, in a galaxy far far away jim five minutes there's nothing interesting or, <laughs> there's nothing interesting or exotic about it i can tell you this mustafar is a much longer drive from my neighborhood <laughs> and uh yeah five minutes that's all it takes and uh the next thing you know i'm 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 in the quarry um, having uh, a good old time, but yeah, that that was disappointing, and especially the fact that it didn't result in any sort of classic saber duel. It right. was Kenobi on the run, Kenobi with diminished force skills. It was a premature duel, right? And uh, probably not necessary for that particular story. Um, but the lead up to it was outstanding. <laughs> I it mean, was. we got to see Vader. Is that? That horror movie. He was Jason. He was yeah. Freddy. He, yeah. he was uh, Michael Myers. Right. He was just, you know, unstoppable and on a killing spree. And I think a lot of fans have always wanted to see <laughs> that edge, that Darth Vader edge, the thing that makes him so terrifying, you know? So, um, well, if he crescendos, uh, but, you know, if the character crescendos, and peaks at that level of evil, then it makes everything around it, his lead up, Anakin's fall, his redemption, that much more mm. powerful. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and, and, you know, I don't mind filling in some of the blanks as far as the things Darth Vader was doing between the era of Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. I want to see the evilest of Vader's. Yeah. In those moments. And I think there's a lot of potential still in the storytelling to continue down that path. However, this particular Blu-ray release is being promoted as Obi-Wan Kenobi, the complete series. I think Lucasfilm is, is, is trying to quash our uh, writing campaign, influenced by the great Ewan McGregor himself, who told fans to write in to Lucasfilm and kindly request a second season of Kenobi. Now, you and McGregor didn't give out a particular email address, but I suggest people write 
public relations at lucasfilm.com <laughs> and see what happens. See see how quickly their bots can respond to your email. Oh, they're not see bots. It's, it's poor Nora. We we discovered Nora, Nora there. <laughs> unless unless well, Nora is a bot. She's an AI employee of Lucasfilm. I'm sure. Oh, there and, Are you uh, saying there is no Nora? I'm saying there is a Nora, but she's artificial intelligence. And, hey, get used to it, folks. I mean, Lucasfilm is cutting edge. They've been on top of technology for a long time. Guys like me and Swank will be replaced by AI in, the, I think, five, three to five years. Yeah. I see it coming. Three to five years. No brainer. I just hope I'm um, retired by then. Yeah, well, it won't be in three <laughs> to five years, I'll tell you that. But, you know, I don't mind so, uh, just kicking back and letting AI do my, do my work for me. Uh, but you know what? I am I'm embarrassed because I was all over this release, Jim, and I did not notice this. I the complete didn't know, the series. complete series. Yeah, yeah. Good eye on that. It's, it's done. I think it's a, a very um, passive aggressive messaging coming at us, coming at you and McGregor himself, saying, "No more. We're done with the Kenobi thing. It's over with." Yeah, it's a shame. Wow. It is. There is potential. There is. Could, there was potential in the original story too, but there could be whether a film. or not they reached that. It could be it was someday. Post- well, no, no. I'm saying that any more potential, um, it could, it could be a film. What was you know that, and that could also be the lesson that they learned, because a lot of people said that it was too you know stretched too too far, and it was it was too thin, and Maybe. you know if they go, I just can't imagine them kind of rubbing Ewan's nose in it like this uh, or, or anybody that was in, in the involved in the production, but great eye. Um, I did not notice that there are some bonus features for those of you um, interested in that. I will tell you that I was a little underwhelmed by the bonus features in the, on, in the Mando discs. I really thought yes. that the Disney gallery was going to be included. Those are so yeah. great. Um, it's pretty lightweight. At least you can still yeah. access that stuff. Right. But I would like I would prefer a man a more meaty Mandalorian home video release. I, I'll tell you what, this Kenobi release seems like there's some meat on the bones. Yeah, what do we got here? We got uh, bonus features, duels of fate, Obi-Wan versus Vader. This is a featurette. Uh Deborah Chow, Ewan McGregor, and Hayden Christensen examine the lightsaber battles of Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. We have the Dark Times villains. Uh, uncover the lore of the deadly Inquisitors and Darth Vader's iconic look. More about the Inquisitors. That wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, designing the galaxy. There is uh, This series is also on the Mando sets. Uh, say hello to Leia's lovable sidekick, Lo- oh, Lola. Did I hear Lola? <laughs> I hope I don't wake her up. Jimmy Mack has got Lola in the... Uh, RFR Studios there in Chicago. Uh, So you're going to get more about Lola, then explore the new planets of the Star Wars galaxy. And then finally, this is an interesting one, a director's commentary, Deborah Chow, for an exclusive audio commentary on the action-packed finale. Um, Uh That I'm interested in. I'm very interested in that. Because I want to hear Deborah talk through it. There are no director's commentaries on the Mando sets. Which is so, a bummer. It is a bummer. Because, because Filoni them. and Favreau, sitting behind a microphone watching some episodes of The Mandalorian, I think would sell a few copies. I would definitely be interested to hear them walk us through some episodes. And I'm really interested to hear Deborah Chow walk us through the, the finale of Kenobi. And when they say finale, they mean finale. Yeah. yeah. Action-packed <laughs> finale. Finale in caps. And underlined. So, yeah, they're, they're really making it very clear that uh, there ain't going to be any more Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Yeah, it's seasons. a complete series. So uh, that is coming out April 30th, along with and or, let's check, the complete first season. All right. so we know. <laughs> Well, we know season we know, two is on know, the way with but, that but one. I mean, Do we ever and, really know? But no, we know. <laughs> of course we know. So, yeah, the complete first season of and or also out. April 30th, nice looking packaging there. Three discs as opposed to the two for Kenobi. And um, looks like you still get some of those picture cards of the concept art. Bonus features here. 
Uh, Ferrix, Part 1, Imperial Occupation. Tony Gilroy, Kathleen Kennedy, and Diego Luna discuss the series' origins. Okay, Aldani, Rebel Heist, joined the shoot in Scotland with character spotlights, Rebel training, stunts, a VFX a breakdown, and more. Great Coruscant. moment from season one. Oh, yeah. Yes. Great moment. The Aldani heist. Fantastic. All these are great moments. It was. It's mm -hmm. a fantastic show and i'm i haven't gone back and and rewatched it on disney plus but i know i will with these blu-rays and then of course in anticipation of season two uh rounding out here coruscant whispers of rebellion explore the series of isb or excuse me explore the stories of isb agent deidre senator mon, mm -hmm. mon mothma and spy master luthan rail narkina five one Way Out featurette. All right, you One Way Out guys, get ready. Uncover the Empire's penal system. And uh, can we say that on a podcast, family friendly? Penal system. <laughs> yeah, we, we can say it on a podcast. Okay. Just don't right. say it at the dinner table. <laughs> okay. Uncover the Empire's penal system in the prison's stark look. Get to know Kino Loy and view VFX breakdowns. Finally, Ferrix Part 2, Fight the Empire. And it does say Fight the Empire. And this is Tony <laughs> Gilroy, Dana Luga, Diego Luna, cast and crew reveal the making of the season finale. Uh, boy, I'm bummed that there's no director's commentary here. I would love to <laughs> have, I uh, would love for um, Tony Gilroy to be walking us through an episode. That would uh, be spectacular. Yeah. That would really be great. And I don't know, understand why that stuff isn't happening with these releases. Maybe it's because of the downtime that the Disney company has been taking from physical releases. They maybe they're just warming up to, yeah. uh, to all of the great potential that uh, bonus features on, on Blu-ray can offer. I hate to but say I'm it. Very Sometimes interested. it just comes down to the availability of, of the people. Well, this is true. Play. So, you know, Deborah Chow might be a lot more available <laughs> than uh, Tony Gilroy. Uh, just saying, yeah, I, nothing against nothing yeah. against her. This if you could pull her away, if you could pull her away from her dartboard with the picture of Charmin obeyed Chinois <laughs> face on it, <laughs> Charmin right. who leapfrogged all of these great female directors who have been working mm. in Star Wars to land the choice plum gig of being the first female director in Star Wars, or according to her, the first to tell a story in the star wars universe or right whatever she's those those famous last it's, words it's she about uttered time. it's then. about time a woman it's tells the story time. um there there these two releases i said on april 30th along with for you marvel fans uh moon knight and then uh falcon and the winter soldier also coming out in physical media so those marvel series are also coming out i think loki was one that came out with the two mando box sets so that's great mm. news. Um, I don't think the the Sony deal was in play when these were being uh, put together and manufactured. Yes. So subsequent releases might be there uh, in, in Sony. And also super sad for our Australian fans uh, because Australia is not, isn't getting any of these. In fact, there are a lot of countries that aren't getting uh, these. Now, not fair. 4K, 4K is a region free format. So any 4K player no matter what country you're in should be able to play these, but as far as you be able to walk into a store in Australia mm. and in parts of Europe um not going to be getting them. So no. Well, so if you live in Australia and you really want to get these, email Jason Swank, show at rebelforceradio.com. <laughs> he will purchase them and send them to you. I will. I'll flip them. It'll only cost you 3 times retail. <laughs> there you go. All right. Very enterprising.